uh, throughout the term, we've been talking about using the ASP.NET framework to help us out creating applications, web applications. And the idea works something like this, you know, rather than having to handcraft our applications from scratch every single time, back like they did in, in the good old days, We get, a, we get a jumping off point, we get a foundation, we get a framework that saves us a lot of work. And it saves us a lot of work in development, it saves us a lot of work in testing, and it has the advantage that, that there's some level of consistency. So the same problem is probably addressed in the same way, as opposed to everyone coming up with their own unique solutions to uh, a given problem. So. We have this framework as our foundation that we build upon. Now, so far we've been building upon that framework. applications sort of sit on top of the ASP.NET framework. They take advantage of the components contained within the framework. Again, for all those reasons that I stated a minute ago. All right? There's another way that we can use the framework to, to, to help us out. All right? And we can do that by creating our own components. Remember, what is a framework? A framework is a series of components that we can plug together to create an application. So we start with the starting out point. We, you know, we don't have to go in and, and invent every single aspect of our application. We can use a pre-built pre component and plug that in, for example. So as opposed to writing our own JavaScript validation, we can use an ASP.NET uh, validation control to do the validation. And we just have to configure. We just have to wire up the components together so that they work together. Now, a couple things that we could do to um, make our job even easier still. All right? First of all, the ASP.NET framework, as, as you might imagine, is for um, really, um, I guess we would call it sort of infrastructure type things, if we're going to make the analogy. In other words, there's nothing in the ASP network, uh, or framework rather, specific to, say, schools, or specific to accounting firms, or specific to marketing firms, or specific to uh, web uh, software development companies. All right? The framework is, is very sort of generic things, things that you'd be using regardless of your, your business, or regardless of your problem domain. That's actually the word I'm looking for, problem domain. The problem domain is sort of the, 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 the issues that you're trying to address with your development. So, you, you know, in a school, in the academic world, that's a problem domain because you have, to, you have to deal with students, you have to deal with grades, you have to deal with degrees, and so on. That's all part of the academic problem domain. All right? The framework doesn't really address the problem domain because there's so many different problem domains out there. Right? And each one has their own sort of twist on how to do things. You know, the procedure to, uh, the requirements to get a degree here would be different than maybe a Tri-C. Or the, the requirements um, to add a course or drop a course might be different than a Tri-C. All right? And so on. So, one thing that we can do is we can extend this framework by adding our own custom components. So I'll put custom components here. And I will call these business classes. business logic. And people usually use that term even if they're not talking about a business per se. You know. Probably
probably a better way to say is classes related to the problem domain. We can also extend this framework by enhancing or maybe extending the .NET classes. All right. We're not going to talk about this part of it right now. We probably will talk about it later on. Or we might talk about it later on in the semester. But, for example, we could take a .NET component as a starting point and customize it for our particular purposes. Um, the example I saw is there was a label um, class that extended the ASP.NET label and made it like a welcome label that looked a certain way and acted a certain way. All right? So that's the two ways that we can extend our framework. And the impact of that is we then have more power in developing our applications. All right. So we start out, you get these for free. right? That's part of the .NET framework. Then we can soup up that .NET framework by adding our own custom classes, our own custom components based off the .NET framework. We'll not look at that today. What we are going to look at today is creating our own custom components, our own custom classes uh, for our business problem or whatever our problem domain is. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now, the reason we're going to do this, if you go back to the tip example, the tip example, we successfully refactored it to a point to where we could do um, we could call the function for a tip from several places on our page. And we could pull the data for the amount from different text boxes or different uh, controls. We also could set the values like for the level of service and dine in. We could default them or we could pull those from controls or whatever. So we made that a neat little function that was a black box. All right. The outside world didn't need to know anything about how the inner workings of that works. All right. All it needs to know is if you give it the um, amount of the, the, the bill in the restaurant, the level of service, and whether it's dine in or not, it'll give you back the tip. So we successfully made it, and we successfully, you know, untethered, all right, unbound that function from the page for the most part. Now the problem is, is that function still lives on the page. So if we were going to do a different page that also did the tip calculation, we really haven't gained anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our custom component. All right? We're going to create a custom class for meal. All right? And we can put in there anything that we are interested about regarding a meal. Now again, this is a pretty simple example. All we're really going to worry about is a tip probably. All right. But we're going to create a component and we could add other things about it. In fact, everything about a meal we're going to store in that class so that anyone needs to access a meal, it will do it through that class. That will ensure consistency. That will make it easier for testing, etc. So someone else has to come up with a different tip page altogether, or maybe a tip chart, let's say. All right. Then all you need to do is plug that component in the new page, and you'll be all set. You wouldn't have to recreate that logic at all. All right. Now that's that's our goal. All right. So that's where we're headed. In doing that, we make our framework bigger and which allows us to grow our applications even more. All right. So, I started out using a lot of terms, and we've talked about these terms before, but as we get into this, I want to talk about them even more still to make sure that we all understand, all understand these terms. All right. I've used the term 
throughout the course of class and object. <clears throat> Let's start out by differentiating between those two. <coughs> What is a class? What is an object? If I talk about a class or if I talk about an object, what am I talking about and how are they different? Yes? And anything else? The breed. The breed of the dog. 
Anything else maybe? The health or the weight or something like that. So if I was a veterinarian, maybe I could write a little rule that said how much exercise this dog needs per day. All right? Maybe. I don't know. You know? And, you know, estimate the amount of exercise that a dog needs a day. Uh, a day. And it would be some sort of rule based on, well, if the dog is this year uh, years old and this breed and of this health and of this weight, it needs this much exercise per day. And if it's some other values, it's some other. So a behavior of the dog, a behavior of that class would be like determine, you know, how much exercise uh, this dog needs. Another way to put this is that objects know things and objects can do things. And really sometimes when you're developing even, you let each person pretend that they're an object or pretend they're a class. And you ask them questions to execute their behavior. So in this example for a dog, assuming the dog was a talking dog like Scooby-Doo or or his nephew Scrappy, who everyone hates, right? Um, you could ask the dog, how much exercise do you need? And the dog, or in this case our dog object, which is sort of a software representation of a dog, would tell you, I need one hour a day, I need 15 minutes a day, and so on. And we could go through for a bunch of different behaviors. What is the dog's ideal way? Dog, tell me what your ideal weight is, you know. Um, the same thing doesn't work with cats, by the way, because uh, my one cat would, would lie and tell you uh, that his ideal weight is much higher because he loves to eat. And he, and he even pretends he hasn't eaten when he sees a different member of the family uh, to try to trick us into feeding him twice. At least I think that is. Maybe, maybe I'm projecting a little bit of my own feelings on that. All right. At any rate... This class, dog, knows some things. It knows attributes. It knows characteristics. In addition, it can like figure things out or it can calculate things. Again, this being sort of a software representation of a dog. All right? So, an individual dog then will have values for those specific attributes and will be able to apply those behaviors, they're sometimes called, or methods, or functions, all right, things that the class knows how to do, all right? And those are the methods, all right? Now, let's think of our meal class, all right? If you remember before, all right, we were doing a calculation of an amount of a tip, all right? So, and to determine that, we need to know how much the, the, the bill was for the, uh, for, for the meal. We need to know what the level of service was, and we need to know if it was dine-in or carry-out. And if we know that, then we know how much the tip should be. All right. Thinking in terms of classes, then, Assuming we have our meal class, what would be the attributes and what would be the methods? Keeping in mind we could do this a couple different ways, all right? But what seems like an attribute, what seems like a method? Total cost is an attribute. Total cost? The cost of the meal? Okay. That seems like an attribute to me. All right. What's another one? Yes. Um, a particular food that you will have. Okay. For that meal. Maybe, maybe a, a menu item? Yeah, list of items on the meal. All right. What would another attribute be? Thinking about, again, just what we're doing with the tip calculator. The value. That's, yeah, that's, that's the cost, yeah. Well, dine in, level of service. All right. 
Now, that was a good point to bring up the list of, of items, because this could actually be not just a single attribute, but it could be an array. It could actually be an array of menu item objects, right? There could be a menu item class that we would have that would have all the information about the menu items, like how much it costs, um, how many calories are in it, um, if there's any like allergy information, like if it contains peanuts or, or, or MSG or gluten or whatever. All right, we're not going to take it that far. But the point is, is these attributes can be simple, what are called primitives, like integers, doubles, booleans, but they can also themselves be components. You know, a meal is really a collection of menu items, right? Because you might order a salad, you might order an entree, you might order a dessert, you might order a beverage. So we could actually have a, 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 an attribute in the meals class that was a list of the menu items and each menu item being represented by a menu item object. All right, so an array of menu item objects. Um, yes, go ahead. I know we didn't do this on our tip calculator, huh? but if you wanted to get really fancy, you could have like number of people there, because don't they automatically charge an 18% Yeah, like exactly, people. exactly. Maybe the number of people, Maybe the restaurant, maybe a rating. And again, this restaurant might not just be a string that contains the name of it. This restaurant might be a restaurant object. Now, what might be some of the attributes of a restaurant object? Address, yeah. Maybe the name of the restaurant, the address. What about, like, whether it's Italian or French? City, or... state, zip, some sort of category, and so on. So menu item could consist of um, a description, a number of calories, um, food allergy info, and so on. So you see we're building up a whole set of building blocks. Now, we're not going to go crazy in this example and, and implement all of these. But the idea is that anywhere I would need a restaurant, I wouldn't like reinvent the wheel. I wouldn't have information about the restaurant in this class. And then if I had another uh, class like health inspection for restaurants, have restaurant information in there. If I had more than one class that needed to talk about restaurants, I would simply use the restaurant object inside of it. If I had any other class that needed to talk about menu items, I'd use the menu item object, and so on down the line. All right? This notion is, is called encapsulation. All right? The idea is everything about this class is in this class. It's not in a couple different places. And anytime you want to refer to a member of this class, you use a class. And you use an object created from that class. All right? So. This would be some of the attributes of our meal class. Now again, we're not going to implement all of these. We'll probably just implement the ones relevant to our tip problem. And the rest of them, you know, um, we'll, we'll leave uh, just in the interest of time. Now, what might be a behavior? What is this, what's something that this meal should be able to tell us? And I know you have to use your imagination and imagine a talking meal. All right. What are some things that the meal should be able to tell us? Whether it's mild or spicy. Okay. Maybe. Or maybe the menu item would tell us that. And the meal 
would sort of take a poll among all the menu items to tell us what the overall spiciness is. All right? So that might be one thing that the meal would be able to tell us. So you're right. The meal might be able to tell us, and it might get that by asking the menu item, gee, are you spicy? And then you might be able to say, well, the spice in this meal ranges from mild to spicy because, you know, the cheesecake isn't very spicy, but the, the uh, burrito is extremely spicy or moderately spicy or whatever. That's an example of what's called uh, delegation. In other words, you ask the meal how spicy you are, the meal asks the menu items, how spicy are you? And then sort of tallies up, maybe comes up with an average rating or, or whatever. What's another thing that the meal should be able to tell us? Quality. The quality. All right. I put some sort of rating in there as an attribute. Well, something else that the meal should be able to tell us. Well, thinking of our tip example, should be able to tell us how much how much uh, of a tip I should leave, you know. Next time you're in a restaurant, you know, look at your plate and say, how much tip should I leave? And it should be able to tell you, right? Because a meal knows how good the service was. A meal knows how good the food was. A meal knows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, the meal knows the rules. And it should be able to tell you how much a tip is. Now, the meal should also be able to tell you how much sales tax is on it, right? Because I don't remember exactly how it goes, but it depends whether it's dine-in or, or, or carry-out, right? Um, the meal should be able to tell you the total price, right? If you take the price of the meal plus the price of the tip or the amount of the tip plus the sales tax, that'll be the total. So the meal should be able to tell you all these things based on these attributes, okay? So for our case, we're just going to keep it simple, and we're going to calculate the tip. And depending on time, maybe we'll calculate tax, and maybe we'll calculate the total. All right. Now, so this is our this is our plan. This is our, our sketching out a class. Design is always important when you're creating these classes, and and I use the word design, and and. Design, sometimes people think, you know, maybe if they watch too much HGTV or whatever, when you think about design, you're talking about just the visual aspect of it. To be sure, that's a part of the design of a web application, how it looks. And not necessarily just how nice it looks, but how usable it is. But just as important part of design in a software sense is developing sort of your, your plan of how you're going to go through and proceed to do this. So, for example, for this tip calculation, I'm going to create a meal class. And I'm going to, I'm going to erase now the attributes we're not going to implement in the interest of time. I'm going to implement the cost of the meal, whether it's dine-in or not, and the level of service. And the methods that we're going to use are Calculate tip, and depending on time, maybe these other two as well. All right. So, we're almost ready to start coding. All right. Now, again, this is one of those things that my hope is that you'll take it to heart. But I know how students are, and I know how programmers are. A lot of people, when they're first given an assignment, what they will do is they'll just crack open the software tool, whatever they're using, Eclipse if they're doing Java, or Visual Studio if they're doing uh, .NET, and they'll just start banging away at the keyboard. All right? It's good to have a plan, and part of the plan is deciding what your classes are going to be, deciding what the attributes are, deciding what the methods are. Okay. We have components not just in software, but we have them in hardware. All right? Let's think of how components interact in hardware. All right? So, for example, let's see if I can move the camera.